Good morning. On behalf of Colonel Keith Butler, commander of the 509th Operations Group, I'd like to welcome you to today's change of command. My name is Senior Airman Rutledge, and I will be the narrator for this ceremony, where Lieutenant Colonel Robert Schoenberg will relinquish command of the 393rd Bomb Squadron to Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Conan. The change of command ceremony is based on military history dating back to the 18th century. During this time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each particular unit. To this flag and its commander, the soldier of the unit would dedicate their loyalty and trust. When assuming command, the new commander accepts the organizational flag. This gesture is accomplished in front of the unit so all can see and witness their new leader assuming command. This symbolic tradition has survived throughout military history. To ensure our distancing guidelines are maintained, we will forego this particular tradition today. Our goal today is to continue the change of command tradition while recognizing the constraints of the world we are currently living in. We are grateful to Lieutenant Colonel Schoenberg for his hard work and accomplishments in commanding the 393rd Bomb Squadron, and we hope this ceremony will provide a sense of closure while acknowledging the transition of Lieutenant Colonel Conan as the new 393rd Bomb Squadron commander. To help recognize the importance of this ceremony, we are joined today by a number of special and distinguished guests. The presiding official spouse, Mrs. Diane Butler. <laughs> special guests for Lieutenant Colonel Schoenberg include his spouse, Mrs. Corey Schoenberg, and their daughter and two sons, Bethan, Micah, and Bo. Special guests for Lieutenant Colonel Conan include his spouse, Mrs. Lizzie Conan, and their two daughters, Juliet and Violet. Other distinguished guests include the commander, 509th Bomb Wing, Colonel Jeffrey Schreiner, and his spouse, Crystal. The vice commander of the 131st Bomb Wing, Colonel Matthew Calhoun. The Command Chief of the 509th Bomb Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Katie McCool. <laughs> Last but not least, we would like to welcome all base community council and civilian guests, commanders, chiefs, family, friends, and the men and women of Team Whiteman joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem in the invocation. dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Join me for the invocation. Faithful God, we pause for a moment to reflect and give thanks for the mighty 393rd Bomb Squadron, the Tigers. Their legacy as pioneers and protectors, beginning with the B-29, B-17, FB-111, and now the, Sp the B-2 Spirit, is a legacy of strength, character, commitment, and lethality. 
Their purpose and their precision protects peace across the globe and maintains the possibilities of prosperity and picket fences here at home so that every American can passionately pursue their dreams of a better life for their families and their communities. We are indeed grateful for the silent and steady hand of the Tigers. I pray this morning for the women and men of the Tigers. Unite them as one in a spirit of service and camaraderie. Sustain them in their good work. Encourage them and grant them safety in every peril. Give them strength for their labors and wisdom to equal every task. As the colors are passed in this historic ceremony, I especially lift up the two commanders. Be with Lieutenant Colonel Rob Schonenberg as he and his family move to their new assignment. Let their new place of learning and service be a blessing to them in every way as they have been a blessing to us. And be with Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Conant as he assumes command of this great organization. Endow him with every grace of leadership that he will need. Watch over him and his loved ones through all their times of trial. Grant him and his airmen success in every good endeavor so that their mission might be accomplished and every member of the team might find satisfaction in the important work that they are doing on behalf of their nation and their neighbors. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Bailey, for your inspiring invocation. And thank you, Airman Rutledge, for your rendition of the national anthem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, 509th Operations Group, Colonel Keith Butler. What a day for a change of commands. Just beautiful out here. Colonel Schreiner, Colonel Calhoun, everyone, thanks for coming in. This is a, a really, really special occasion. We're here to recognize one family, send them on their way, welcome the next family, and let them step up to the plate. Spartan, you and I have had a long history together, man, since 2007. And uh, we've been to a lot of really cool places. Corey, Bo, Micah, Bethan, you guys are on your way to NATO Defense College in Rome. Maybe, someday. This is just training for you guys to work with the Italian government and the Italian way of life, which is domani, or tomorrow. It's always tomorrow. You guys are gonna absolutely love it, and you have absolutely earned the right to go on to such an amazing senior developmental education. You were my scheduler with me in the Tigers. You were my NEM with me in the OSS. You were my DO with me in the OSS, coming back the second time. And uh, I, I really I appreciate your friendship, the brotherhood, a fellow man of God, and the bond of warriors that you and I are and that will forever take a place in my heart. So thanks for everything that you've done for the Tigers, man. Uh, I'll spare you one of the, or a lot of the things that I would love to talk about with Spartan, but I've got to bring up two things. Uh, one is he and I had the chance to go to uh, Tinian, which is the island that we launched the two atomic bombs from on August 6th and August 9th, of which we're rapidly approaching the 75th anniversary of. And he and I got the chance to be on that island for about three hours uh, and uh, went down to the north field, probably oversped the rental car we were in, sat at the bomb pits, and it just soaked in history. It was amazing. And I couldn't think of anybody better I would have rather have shared that experience with. Spartan and Corey are also an incredibly team, family-oriented family. We had a, a couple years ago, we had a Thanksgiving Day massacre. Uh, and by massacre, I'm gonna spare you the details, but the day after Thanksgiving didn't go well for a lot of people that came to our house. Spartan uh, was for training for COVID, I think, but we were all down for the count. And he took it upon himself to go, not only to get Gatorade, but, but the, the pharmaceutical meds that we needed and some flowers and everything else and just left them on the front doorstep and then walked away. Uh, you didn't have to do it, man. But it's a testament to how you operate, who you are as a person and the type of leader that you are. So we're, we're sad to see you go, the whole family. But you're gonna go on to bigger and better things. Uh, Spartan has been, uh, you can see in the, in the program, uh, an, has had an amazing career. There's one thing I want to highlight to you guys that may not be inside your program. He is the first American to, and I have to write, read this because I'll get it wrong, the first Guild of Air Pilots and Air Navigators Grand Master Medal. I don't even know what that means, but it's from the UK and it sounds pretty amazing. And he's the first American to ever get it, period. 
Uh, so props to you, you're, you're, you're internationally famous. You've treated the Tigers like it's your family. You've taken them to the new heights from where Willie had taken it, and I fully expect Crank to do the same thing. You've been around the world. You've made the Tigers an amazing organization and made them that much more combat ready. So thanks, and best of luck to everyone in your family. Crank, you are eminently qualified to take over the 393rd, and we are happy to have you on our team. Diane and I cannot wait to get to know you and Lizzie better, to understand and feel, get an idea of where you want to take the squadron, but I know it's going to be great. You never make a perfect squadron, ever, but that doesn't mean that you can't make it better, and you always strive for that excellence. You've got time in the Hawks, time in the Reapers, you had time in the Panthers. Now you're coming back over to the Tigers to take over again. You've, you've done strategic policy fellowships. You've gone to Marine Corps Studies of Advanced Warfare Systems. You've, you've been on the Chief Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. You understand the strategic and operational implications of what this aircraft and what this unit does for our base. You and Lizzie are ready to take over with Violet, Juliet, and as Diane and I will attest, with both sympathy and empathy, uh, parents of twins. We know what you're going through, man. Last year you spent your time as DOSSDO learning how to make the sausage and you absolutely killed it. It's time to go eat the sausage as the Tiger Commander, as it were. We're looking forward to working with you, man. Your job is to generate combat missions for the B-2. And you don't do it alone and you know that. It's time to put all that stuff to work. I challenge you to be a bold, invasive, positive, inspiring servant leader as a Tiger Commander. And my order number one to you is just simply this, be ready. Be ready. Thanks again. Let's do a change of command. Thank you, Colonel Butler. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as Lieutenant Colonel Schoenberg receives the Meritorious Service Medal. Due to social distancing guidelines, we will not be physically pinning on the medal today. Attention to orders. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by Executive Order 16 January 1969, has awarded the Meritorious Service Medal, First Oak Leaf Cluster, to Lieutenant Colonel Robert N. Schoenberg for Meritorious Service 4 January 2019 to 10 July 2020. Accomplishments. Lieutenant Colonel Robert N. Schoenberg distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 393rd Bomb Squadron, 509th Operations Group, 509th Bomb Wing, Wyoming Air Force Base, Missouri. As the commander of the only combat B-2 squadron in the world, Colonel Schoenberg took the Tigers to unprecedented heights in both the nuclear and conventional missions. His exceptional leadership directed his squadron through three nuclear generations, including the first B-2 off-station nuclear generation and a flawless zero-deficiency nuclear surety inspection. Additionally, Colonel Schoenberg executed six nuclear weapon systems evaluations to include the largest test in B-2 history and three nuclear weapons tests that lethally demonstrated B-6112 next generation capabilities. As a deployed commander of the Bomber Task Force missions to United States Indo-Pacific and European commands, he expertly led 469 airmen in the production and execution of 76 B-2s at an unprecedented 104% maintenance effectiveness rate. Furthermore, Colonel Schoenberg's efforts resulted in the first ever B-2 hot pit refuelings in Iceland and lodges, and integration sorties with low observable platforms including the F-22 and Royal Air Force F-35s. Finally, he expertly led 18 B-2 aircraft during night one of two no-fail SecDef level exercises, partnering with 350 joint aircraft and achieving 100% of the combatant commander's deterrence objectives. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Schoenberg reflect a great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, 393rd Bomb Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Schoenberg will now give his final remarks. Good morning. Thanks everyone for coming out. I know it's hot, social distancing, uh, everything else. Uh, let me start off by saying thanks to our distinguished visitors, uh, to our wing leadership, uh, Colonel Schreiner, Chief McCool, group commanders making it out, fellow squadron commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, and everyone else being here. 
you learn pretty early on in command that you can't actually accomplish much by yourself. Uh, and to that end, I owe a lot of thanks to a lot of people uh, that I will start going through now, so bear with me. Uh, to General Nichols, Colonel Schreiner, Colonel Grieve, thanks for the opportunity and the privilege of leading the only combat B-2 squadron in the world. Colonel Butler, thanks for those words. I'm not sure that I'm deserving of any of them, but uh, it has been a pleasure being your friend and learning from you every step of the way. I do think that the uh, Tiger beers uh, on Tinian uh, was pretty awesome, and also driving, I think, 110 miles is what we got to before we realized we were going to hit a bush, and we had to slow down because we couldn't get to take off speed. Uh, particularly to Half and Ox, fellow uh, Ops Squadron Commanders that I worked with on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it's been an absolute honor getting to work with people that I love and respect and that I truly call friends. To Tiffany, Mike, and Allison, uh, our jobs, I think, are naturally uh, adversarial. You uh, fix planes, and we break them. You put bombs on planes, and we get rid of them. Um, but through each step, I feel like we work together as a team. Uh, our processes have been streamlined, and I think it's the best ops maintenance relationship that I have ever seen. So thanks to you guys for that. Dude, where, where is dude at? Dude in the back. You made it back. Thanks. Uh, man, I couldn't have asked for more of a DO. Uh, you've killed it every step of the way from day one. I told you this is a team effort. Uh, and you took it as such. I never had to tell you to do your job, you just automatically did it. And that's exactly what I needed from a DO, so thank you. To my patches, Biggie, Heat, Rocky, you guys are the ones who made the Tigers tactical warriors. You deserve the credit of where they're at today, uh, and I couldn't have done it without you. It's one thing to have a patch on your shoulder, it's another thing to lead with humility and credibility, and you guys absolutely nailed it. Rage, wherever you're at, thanks for putting all this together, uh, despite all the, all the way in the back, so thanks Rage. Nobody wants to be in charge of change command, uh, just like nobody wants to be an exec, right? But uh, thanks for the work anyways. I appreciate it. Uh, Graham, thanks for the prayer, brother. Um, man, it's such a pleasure to be in England with you, um, just watching you work. Um, the way you love Jesus. A pastor that has tattoos and smokes, couldn't ask for anything more than that, man. Uh, that's legit. That's, that's genuine love for the Lord, man. I appreciate you as a brother in Christ, so thank you for that. Uh, Alex, narrator, singer, national anthem. Giving credit to yourself there a minute ago. That was awesome. First time I've ever seen that. Uh, that was the 20th time I've heard him actually sing. Uh, and I count each time because every single time it rocks my world. Uh, it gives me chills when you sing the national anthem. So thanks for doing that. Uh, Switch, best mayor to date in the B2 community. So you were awesome. Thank you. The morale of the squadron has uh, done much better than my stocks uh, lately. So we're on an all-time high because of your, your efforts as a mayor. So thank you. I hope you stay as a mayor a long time. Uh, Crank, you are without question the right person to take the Tigers. Your combat record in this jet, uh, your exceptional instructional ability, which I've heard about for a long, long time, uh, and your amazing hair, which we've all talked about for a long time, <laughs> makes you the right person for the Tigers. I almost didn't get it, and then I showed them, you know, that I could do that, and they said, yes, you were ready to be the Tiger Commander. <laughs> you and Lizzie are going to do amazing things. Uh, Corey and I are so excited for you guys and your family and all the experiences you're going to have over the next few years. Uh, it will be hard at times, but you're going to look back and think this is the best time of your life, because it absolutely is. To my exceptionally beautiful wife, Dr. Corey Shanaburn. Uh You didn't sign up for this, right? Um, you've taken on roles and responsibilities you never volunteered for, but you did it. And you did it, as you do with all things, uh, with grace and with style. And you love the Tiger family as your own. I couldn't have done it without you, so thank you. To Bo, Micah, and Bethan, videotaping this. Uh, thanks for putting up with me. All the times I had to stop wrestling, reading, playing Pokemon with you so I could answer a phone, solve a problem. I promise that over the next many weeks and years uh, that I will be relentless in tickling you and playing with you and loving you and beating you at Pokemon as best I can. To my parents and in-laws who continually travel across the country to help us out whenever we ask or whatever we ask, uh, our little family is forever grateful for the sacrificial way that you love us, and it's made me who I am today, so thank you. All right, the speech. Hopefully I'll keep this quick. I'm a man of history, hence my name, Spartan, right? Um, the great Roman general, Vegetus, is credited with a quote that has been repeated throughout the years, and it's so powerful that many squadrons and organizations have adopted it. He said, if you want peace, prepare for war. The idea that if I impress upon these guys, this team, that they could train harder, they could overcome and adapt to any threat, that they were ready for any fight, that more than likely the battle itself was already won. 
before it even started. And to that end, there is no doubt in my mind that this group of tigers sitting in the back there is the most lethal pilots to have ever worn our sacred patch. Leading you has been the honor of a lifetime. Crank, I give you the best of the best. They are ready to fight. And I know that in your tenure that they will only become more combat ready. It gives me great joy to know that the Tigers will not only be in good hands, but in better hands. My prayer for you and for the Tigers will continue to be for peace. But should there be a day that that is no longer an option, I rest assured that you will fight like the warriors I know you to be. Nuke them. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Schoenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. The change of command ceremony will now be performed. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force, Headquarters, Special Order, Golf 2011, dated 9 July 2020. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher M. Conant assumes command of the 393rd Bomb Squadron from Lieutenant Colonel Robert N. Schoenberg, effective 10 July 2020. Signed, Keith Butler, United States Air Force Commander, 509th Operations Group. Sir, I relinquish command. Sir, I assume command. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you the commander of the 393rd Bomb Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Conan. On January 2nd, 1946, eight months before the Air Force was even a thing, then Lieutenant General Vandenberg wrote a memo to General Spots, and I want to read it to you. He was outlining what his commander's intent would be for the first atomic unit. Quote, this group would have the most proficient air crew, the most proficient mechanics, receive the latest aircraft and equipment, maintain constant readiness, and be able to deploy in a short notice to be in wartime operations in a matter of days." End quote. Ladies and gentlemen, not much has changed, and yet much has indeed changed. First, uh, Mrs. Schreiner, Colonel Schreiner, Chief McCool, Colonel Calhoun, Evil, fellow group commanders, squadron commanders. Uh, thank you all for being here, Chaplain Bailey, wherever you went. Thank you, brother. All the honored guests listening. Uh, thanks for listening, if you are. Tiffany, thanks for the use of the hangar. And just thank you to everybody who made this event possible. Uh, to my incredible family, my wife, Elizabeth, my kids, parents, personal friends and mentors, you know, saying thank you often isn't really adequate in times like this. Um, to really describe the sacrifices you made over the years and the love that you've shown. So I just hope that my actions will speak louder than my words, and I'll ask for the continued love and support for the Tigers as we go forth and conquer. Colonel Butler, sir, thank you for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Colonel Schoenberg, thank you for carrying the guide on high, and thank you for your mentorship in this very unique and challenging time of transition. Colonel Whittle and Jean, thank you so much. The last year of uh, learning, watching your command presence, your team as a family, and you guys leading the Hawks. I couldn't have had a better example to lead into my first command. But today is not about me at all. It's not about me or about Spartan. It's really about all of us. And so with that in mind, I just have two points I want to share as I set the tone of what will be my command. I believe these two themes are key, and you'll see that they'll tie into what Spartan has already said to carry on the culture. But they'll be key as we kind of go forth into this very unknown future that we're living in today. 
At ceremonies such as these, you know, retirement ceremonies, promotions, change of commands, it's often important to pause and just to slow down for a second before we had to step over to a assumption of alert breed to continue the fight. Because we need to remember the responsibility we all have to our nation. It's a sobering and empowering responsibility. While we all come from different backgrounds, we all join the military for different reasons. We're all very powerfully united together by service and sacrifice. It really is a grand honor to sign up and protect the Constitution of the United States, and if required, to lay down your life in the continual fight against tyranny. Our country was born of that sacrifice. 244 years ago, the Battle of Concord began with, quote, the shot heard around the world. Well, as Colonel Butler alluded to a minute ago, 75 years ago next month, there was a detonation heard around the world that decisively contributed to the end of the second terrible world war and simultaneously ushered in a whole new era of both peace and war. So what do these two events have in common? Well, fundamentally, they were conducted to protect liberty, but also they were events that were executed by people using technology. What became known then as the spirit of 1776 was with the Enola Gay and still lives today in the B2 spirit. To paraphrase Abraham Lincoln, one of my most powerful quotes, we live in an age where the blood of free men and women may be sacrificed upon the altar of freedom. So ultimately, regardless really of whether you wear a uniform or not, we all as families, friends, loved ones, citizens, are part of that heritage of sacrifice. You all serve. So like I said, today's not about me. <clears throat> now to the members of the 393rd Bomb Squadron, make no mistake, our service and our sacrifice is unique because we are in the profession of arms. This means simply, as I define it, that you are war fighters. Why? Because General Sherman eloquently said, quote, and it ties into what Spartan said a minute ago, the legitimate object of war is a more perfect peace. So how do we ensure that peace? By deterring our potential adversaries into complete paralysis. By crumbling their very cognitive willpower to fight. And if they be so mistaken as to try and fight, we will stand ready to unleash that same spirit of 1776 of the Enola Gay and the Doolittle Raiders, and we will swiftly and violently strike back against the enemies of liberty. That, my fellow warfighters, is called lethality. And that's the second theme I'm hitting on today. The author of our current national defense strategy had lethality as the number one task. That's why. General Mattis, then Secretary Mattis at the time, said, quote, a lethal force is the strongest deterrent to war. Right now, I stand in front of the most lethal weapon on the planet. And no, it's not the beautiful, marvelous B2 behind me. It's you guys. Any adversary who thinks that America is softening, losing its gut to defend our way of life and our values needs to look no further than the warfighters of the 393rd Bomb Squadron and the 509th Bomb Wing. They'll quickly realize any such assessment is a grave error. So in closing, I do believe, and call me bias, I'll gladly be biased, but I do believe that General Vandenberg would be proud if he were here today. He would recognize that we have the most proficient air crew mechanics, and I would add their most proficient team to include our MSG brothers and our medical brothers and sisters as well. However, I do want to end with a note of caution and educated humility. While the Air Force has enjoyed decades of unprecedented success in aerial warfare, it is hubris to think that can't change. A goal our adversaries are always seeking, by the way. Again, to quote Secretary of Defense Mattis, we have no preordained right to victory on the battlefield. So our mission's clear. We will continue to evolve 
and strengthen our lethality. This will be done through sacrifice, relentless pursuit of excellence, and really ultimately fueled by our respect, our trust, and our love for each other. My family and I are more than humbled and uh, more than excited to be serving along each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Conan. To Lieutenant Colonel Schoenberg, the men and women of the 393rd Bomb Squadron are proud to have served with you and extend their best wishes to you and your family for your continued success. They also welcome Lieutenant Colonel Conan to the 393rd Bomb Squadron family and look forward to continued mission success. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of our commanders and their families, thank you for joining.